What's good gamers, about 15 minutes ago, the new PTR 10.2 Guardians of the Dream just came out, the WoW cost for that. So we're gonna be reacting to this basically live. It was 15 minutes ago, so it's pretty much now. I'm really looking forward to 10.2. So yeah, let's jump into it, shall we? Hello everyone, welcome to WowCast. Today we're going to talk about our next major content update, Guardians of the Dream. And I have two special guests here with me today. Please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Taylor Sanders. I'm an encounter designer on the World of Warcraft team. And I'm Ann Stickney. I'm a senior narrative designer on the World of Warcraft team. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. What is coming with Guardians of the Dream? Yeah, so Guardians of the Dream is a huge content update. Uh, we have a new outdoor zone, the Emerald Dream itself, right? All right. Um First bit of fake news. I know we all see, saw this coming. We all knew that it was probably going to be the Emerald Dream, but how often have we had moments where we go, this is it. We're, we're going into the Emerald Dream. And then it, it just doesn't happen. There's something that changes, and never mind that. We're not going into the Emerald Dream. So to finally be able to go into the Emerald Dream, I'm ready. Show me more. Right, that we're going to be traveling to. We have a new raid. Uh, we have new public events within um, the outdoor zone itself. And then also uh, season three will be launching as well. So we just finished okay. up Fractures in Time. Can you tell us what's next? What are we going to expect in this major content update? Well, with Fractures in Time, we kind of wrapped up the story of the Bronze Dragon flight. And we all. Quick thing here. I don't actually think we wrapped up the story of. Nosdormu and the Bronze Dragon flight, especially now with the Eterna stuff that just come out, for those of you that haven't seen it yet, because I didn't react to it. Uh, okay, so Eternus, effectively, the reason Eternus is part of the Infinite Dragon flight is because she believes that all time should be malleable, and she wants to save her sister who was killed by Nalfarian and the Black Dragons. Nosdormu tells her, all right, try. And she can't. There's nothing she can do her sister dies every single time. If something is supposed to happen, it appears as if it will happen. So the fact that Chromie was able to postpone Nosdormu's turn into Morazond suggests that maybe it wasn't Nosdormu's time yet, but that the prophecy still holds. And at the appointed time, Nosdormu will become Morazond and there is nothing that anyone can do about it. At least if the lore is consistent. Because Eternus couldn't save her sister no matter what she did. Therefore, how the hell are you going to change one of the oldest prophecies we have in World of Warcraft? And we know it came true because we know that Morazond exists. We also saw Eridicron take off for parts unknown. One person that we haven't seen since Zeralet Caverns is Farrakh we get to catch up with him here. More importantly, what's going on is that Amir Drasil, that tree, the, the seed that yeah. Tyrande took from the Shadowlands, she's planted it, it's been growing in the Emerald Dream. And I feel like I, I'm a little salty at the fact that we found out the name of this tree so nonchalantly in a cinematic, and it was said by Alex Straza as if everyone just knew. It was just common knowledge. Hey, Amir Dishal, Amir Dishal, we've known this since vanilla. It's like, well, where's the quest exactly where we were told that this new tree is actually called Amir Dishal? So yeah, I'm a little salty about that, but still very excited for the overall storyline, especially now seeing what Farak wants to do with this tree. And now I'm even more interested in what wall trees do because apparently there's some power inside of them that is sort of unequaled by anything else. So Varak isn't looking for anything else. He's looking specifically for that power. And it's about to cross over. It's a very powerful tree. We're not the only ones interested in it. Of course not. So, can't be that easy. <laughs> of course not. No, it can't be that. It's never that easy. So uh, it turns out Farak's kind of interested in this tree and he's got some friends that he's bringing along with him. 
we finally enter the portal into the Emerald Dream. What does it look like? What can we expect? First off, we're finally going to the Emerald Dream, <laughs> right? And we've seen like bits and pieces of it since like what? Yeah, since I don't know, back in you know the classic days when the game was first kind of released. Druids. Yeah, yeah, with the Druids, yeah, and then uh, old, I think actually. more recently the Emerald Nightmare Raid mm -hmm. back in Legion, right? But we've always visited these little. It's a little problematic that one of the narrative designers don't know since when we've had the Emerald Dream, or at least since when we've seen it. Now, it might be because they don't actually make the game, they just write the lore for the game, so maybe they don't know. But, I mean, there, there's parts of the Druid stuff uh, that, that forms, to some extent, part of the Dream, and that's been there basically since Classic. So, yeah, it, I mean, pockets. Sure. And in Guardians of the Dream, we get to visit, like, an actual section of the Dream. I, the Emerald Dream itself is a reflection of the wild world so mm -hmm. it's green it's overgrown it's beautiful there's stuff blooming all over the place but also we aren't the only ones interested in that tree uh farak is there and he's got some allies with him so the place is while part of it is you know overgrown wild beautiful blooming there's also parts of it where farak's forces has have hit this place it's a war-torn landscape right okay. it's not perfect it's not ideal but we're there to fix it yeah. and make sure that Farrakh doesn't get what he wants. If you are familiar with lore, we're going to the Eye of Ysera. And it's a place that has been mm. mentioned in lore for a very long time. We've never been there. It's the center of the Emerald Dream. Yeah. Not literally, <laughs> figuratively. So the Eye of Ysera focuses on the areas of the dream that are they, they need the most attention from the Green Dragon Flight. And in Guardians of the Dream, it's a I want to point something out that, that's maybe a little bit more nitpicky, but still, I think, worth pointing out. I'm still not entirely clear on what the Emerald Dragonflight do. But I know most of you are going to say, well, they're Guardians of the Dream. Yeah, but against what? Wait, w what do they do in the Dream? When they were made, so when you go back to when the Titan Keepers made them, there was no one that knew that the old gods were going to create a nightmare and gain access into the dream. So what exactly is their purpose within the dream? And more specifically, if you think about the nightmare, it wasn't the Emerald Dragons that took care of the nightmare. It was Malfurion and Tyrande that was cleansing the corruption within the Emerald Dream. So it was the Druids that, that was doing the heavy lifting on that side. So it, it is sort of like this... What exactly are they guarding? Are we actually going to find out finally what the Emerald Dream really is? Like, why does it require an entire dragon flight of its own? And it, because if it was just life on Azeroth uncorrupted, then surely the, the red dragons would have been fine. They could have looked over that as well, considering they, they look over life and, and the Emerald Dream has been sold to us as like this place where life on Azeroth really came from and, and where life is preserved on Azeroth or at least nature is preserved on Azeroth. So yeah, I'm really, it's a sketchy subject. What do the green dragons actually do? Mirvasil. Uh, obviously, you know, we want to help bring this tree from the uh -huh. Emerald Dream into Azeroth. The outdoor area uh, that we have, you know, releasing with our content update is just absolutely gorgeous. The art team has really outdone themselves yet like again. Like always. <laughs> and seeing the Emerald Dream in all of its glory, right, as players get to explore finally, like an actual zone that represents sort of all of the um, incredible, like sort of artistic influence of the Emerald Dream. And, and we're going to see tons of great characters that yeah. we kind of know and love that are related um, to the Emerald Dream itself. Uh -huh. So within this new zone, there's a new raid. Can you tell us more about the new raid? Yeah, so one of the um, sort of war-torn places um, within the Emerald Dream um, is our new raid, Amir Drasil, The Dream's Hope. This is a nine boss uh, raid ah. where players uh, get to explore one of the most interesting places within the Emerald Dream. The story here um, starts at Wellspring Temple, um, which is sort of a place within the Emerald Dream that's feeding Amir Drasil, this world tree, all of its kind of energy and, and life force. It's nurturing the yeah. tree. It's a very important place. Um 
Titan stuff, bro. Whenever you hear feeding things into trees and doing things. Titans. What did the Titans do? Why are the Titans doing it? I am so sus. Like, the Titans are so sussy, bro. Like, super sussy. I cannot trust them because everything seems to come with some kind of twist. Ah. Um, to Farrakh and his designs on the Emerald Dream and, and what he wants to um, I like sort of that there's Jordan, One Druids of the, of the Flame. Is untouched by Farrakh and his allies for now and represents sort of the wild nature of the Emerald Dream. There are defenders of the temple here who are natural to the dream, and one of those defenders mm -hmm. is our wing boss for that section, uh, Nimue, Weaver of the Cycle. So when players enter Nimue's Whoa, chamber, wait, 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 wait. Um, it's this beautiful sanctum that really represents sort of the Emerald Dream in its most pure form. On the floor of the chamber, Nimue um, is ordering the weave of the Emerald Dream itself, sort of represent the act of creating things with the Emerald Dream and defending it. And Did you guys just hear the word he used there? Ordering? <laughs> oh man, if, if, oh my, if by now people on, like let me know in the comment section down below, do you guys trust the Titans at all? Is there anyone that actually trusts the Titans at this point? Um, I also find it very awkward that we're 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 gonna be fighting the actual denizens of this temple. Why? W who are we actually working for here? And, and protecting it. In the other wing of uh, our raid, uh, this is a wing that's been destroyed by Farak and his molten allies. Uh -huh. Right, Smolderon sits at the end of this wing. Uh, oh. The Fire Lord himself. Cool looking fire. And Fire Bro. has sort of poured through this portal where Farak has brought the Firelands sort of screaming, you know, into the temple itself. So we're going to see uh, all the destruction that that has wrought um, and be able to fight Smolderon right at the end of that wing. Another encounter we have uh, within the raid is Tendril Sage Swift, who is one of the leaders uh, of the Druid of the Flame. Yeah, Druids of the Flame, basically the last time we saw them was in Cataclysm when we defeated Vandral Staghelm. Yeah. But they've been planning this kind of resurgence, and with the burning of Teldrassil, they've been able to recruit a lot more willing people to go along with their plans. The exciting oh, thing about this nice. encounter is that finally we'll get to Dragon Ride within a raid encounter um, in Dragonflight. So um, this is an incredibly a cool opportunity to be able to jump on Dragon back with, you know, all of your friends <laughs> that you're raiding with Shit. Um, and pursue Tendril as he sort of like flies around a Mirdrasil, <laughs> right? You're like banking through fireballs and stuff during combat. So uh, it's right. gonna be really exciting to see. Wow, that's amazing. That's a cool idea. Yeah, visually it sounds really cool mm -hmm. to have 25 people all mount up, and but mechanically, yeah. we need people to test it out. <laughs> yeah. We just need people to test yeah, it out. Yeah, the PTR is so <laughs> helpful for that. Yeah. <laughs> and then of course, I mean, we can't forget oh, yeah. uh, Farak. Right. Finally. Yeah. The reason. Finally. Spicy, nasty boy. Oh, I'm yeah. ready to beat him up. <laughs> he's, uh, he's here in the Emerald Dream, and the raid will end with a showdown against you know the Fire Incarnate himself. Mm. Okay. Is there any like juicy rewards in the raid? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, much as in other raids um, for uh, during Dragonflight, players can expect some new armor sets that oh, they yes. can earn. Right. Um, that are sort of class themed. Um, but also have a touch of the Emerald Dream to them, right? Um, they're beautiful. A, they're, the art is absolutely incredible. How are you going to do Warlock armors that has a touch of the Emerald Dream to it? When all a Warlock would want to do in the Emerald Dream is basically turn into foul. <laughs> for these uh, new sets uh, within the raid. So they can expect new sets to earn um, that'll each have, you know, class bonuses, cool bonuses on them. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to get my hands on them uh, for I my love, characters. I love collecting the sets too. Yeah. Speaking of getting our hands on something, yes. Farak's got something really tasty for us to get our hands on. <laughs> oh. All right. Um, we have a new legendary weapon coming yes. uh, in Kay. Guardians of the Dream. This is going to be a two-handed axe that players can earn. They'll have to keep their ear to the ground exactly on how to get their hands on it. Um, but yeah, it's well, a really powerful weapon um, wielded by um, Farak himself. Um, it's called Fearlath the Dream Render. Uh, we've been listening to feedback oh. um, from the Embers of Neltharian update, and um, you know we're uh, we, we hope we can provide um, something that you know players really feel like they can um, earn the axe um, over time and um, feel really rewarded for their time in the raid. So we've spoke about the amazing raid and the beautiful zone of the Emerald Dream. 
what other things can we expect in Guardians of the Dream? So we've got something really unique coming to Guardians of the Dream. It's not just one public event, it's three of them. And they feed into each other in this kind of cyclical sort of wilderness nature kind of thing. <laughs> there's there's three different events. First one is the Super Bloom, and that one is, if you've ever played Overwatch, it's like protecting the payload, right? <laughs> okay, so you've got this ancient who's going through and he's trying to, you know, bloom the dream, and you have to help him out by defending him from things and helping him get things, that kind of stuff. Okay. When that's done, it triggers the second public event called the Emerald Frenzy, and it's a farming kind of public event where uh, wilderness has kind of gotten out of control. So you go through, you're farming everything, and there, it's dropping currency, it's dropping seeds left and right. The more people that are <laughs> in it, the more... Currencies, bro. Uh, I can't with all these currencies anymore, bro. Like, I mean... Not gonna lie, for, for the lore, I'm super excited because, again, it sounds really, really cool. But more gear, more currencies, more upgrade, just more ways for all of the hard work you've done up until now to basically just be nullified in literally a couple of months from now. Which kind of brings me back to a complaint that I've had for a while now, and that is, why would I even gear my current player when I could just wait? Right? I could just wait for now and then just do it on 10.2, or on the last patch of the expansion, since it's all just useless, it's going to be made useless in literally a couple of weeks. Well, a couple of months after, you know, after watching this video. I don't know. It just feels like, I know it's probably going to be the same currency. They're going to make sure that it's all universal and it all fits together. But it's still another currency. I don't get excited anymore. For these fucking currencies that we just consistently have to fucking be grinding for. Stuff you get and it's just a grab. So that feeds into the Emerald Bounty. And with the Emerald Bounty, it's a fostering event, right? So all around the Emerald Dream, there's piles of dirt. You can take mm -hmm. those seeds that you gathered and plant them in the dirt. Over the course of five minutes, it'll grow into a sprout. And the more people that show up and feed that sprout and, and nurture that sprout, the bigger it'll get. When it blooms after that five minutes, you get to loot it for cool stuff. I love cool stuff. Well, Can you tell us more bad. about the new Renown faction in this yes, patch? Of course. We've got the Dream Wardens. I mean, we're going into the Emerald Dream, right? Oh, yeah. So the Emerald Dream is full of creatures that live there. And they also have a vested interest in protecting Amir Drasil. So they've decided to go ahead and team up with us. But it's composed <laughs> of those those creatures from the Emerald Dream. So you've got Keepers, you've got Dryads, you've got Druids, obviously. You've got the Green Dragonfly. You've got Rune Bears. They're new. Oh, they're that. very cool. Wow. Um, new Druids And they've game? all come together to just kind of like help us out. And obviously, as with any renown that we've got, there are some really cool rewards involved as you increase your reputation with these guys. I need to it's level my, my Druid all. <laughs> I'm... I realize this is going to be unpopular, and a lot of you might not actually agree with anything I say here, but I'm just over the whole mount reward and, you know, set a reward at the end of a renowned grind. It does not fill me with excitement. I'm not getting excited for it. There's so many mounts in the game, dude. This is, there's too many, and I don't care about any of them. There's too many pets in the game, I don't care about any of them. There's too much gear in the game, I don't care about any of that. The only thing I'm excited for is the lore and the raid. The raid, actually, the fact that we can dragon ride in the raid, that's cool. But, yeah, none of what they mentioned after that has been, to me at least, anything that I'm super excited for. Because it's just more of the same. It looks a little different, but it's the same thing. Even these world events, I'm not blown away by. It, it's... It's variations of things we've already done before. You know, at least it's not rares this time, right? Uh, which is at least some kind of change, but it is still... Go out into the open world, do a bunch of shit, get currency, upgrade your gear. Well, I... There's so much more that we could be doing, especially we're in the dream. There's definitely more that we could do here. Yeah, 
<laughs> for this because it's just it's Druid Heaven. <laughs> yes, yeah. Druid Heaven. Ann and I both played Druids, you know, way back in 2004. So I think we're particularly excited to get to interact with this faction. I think we've never seen before in WoW um, these like types of characters that are really reminiscent of like Warcraft Three and like yeah. Night Elf and Druid lore. So it's going to be very exciting to interact with a lot of those creatures and characters um, that I associate with like my first character ever. So as we're dragon riding through this new zone, is there new dragon riding anything? Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. um, players will be able to dragon ride through the Emerald Dream from day one, oh, uh, cool. which is really a treat with all the incredible art that mm -hmm. is within the zone just in itself. You There's want to walk that zone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? I want to swoop under branches yeah. and like, you know, along the rivers and, and through that environment. Um, they're also going to be able to collect new glyphs that are hidden around the zone and okay. some new transmog appearances. Uh, there's a new dragon riding um, appearance and a new <laughs> dragon riding mount. Looks like so, uh, There's a lot there for players who are interested in dragon new riding. Dragon and riding mount during Dragonflight. I am all about collecting customization, especially huh. for my dragons, so that, I'm super excited about that. Yeah, there's a lot there for players who enjoy that. Um, there's also a new active ability that players will be able to earn um, okay. you know, with their glyphs called Second Wind that allows them to um, sort of like regain vigor instantly. Ooh. So they can gain a little bit more speed. There's new dragon riding races where they can try to, um, you know, try their skills at that with some of these new abilities that they'll earn. Um, and yeah, we're just excited to see how players enjoy zooming through uh, the skies in the Emerald Dream itself. That sounds okay. handy for that dragon riding encounter too. Yes. yes. So you may want to collect your glyphs right away. <laughs> <laughs> practice, just practice. Yeah, get some practice in. <laughs> And there's going to be a new season. Can you tell us more about what the season will be? Yeah, absolutely. So season three will start with Guardians of the Dream. Uh, and with it becomes a new uh, Mythic Plus map. I don't mind the seasons. I just mind that it's how everyone needs to play. For those of you that watched my most recent video called Where's the Hype? Or Why is the Hype Gone? Or something. I don't, I don't remember what I called it exactly. But... I think if you're a Mythic Plus player and you're a raider, yeah, you love the seasons. It, it's always something new. It's always something cool. And I love that for you. But I don't love that for me because I'm not a Mythic Plus player and I'm not a raider. And the seasons just end up making the game feel incredibly reset -y for me. I, I wish there was a way for those of us that don't care about the competition to still just, you know, not have to deal with it, if that makes sense. Three will start with Guardians of the Dream, uh, and with it becomes a new uh, Mythic Plus map pool. So we have eight new dungeons that are arriving. Okay, Dawn of the Infinite, Galakrond's Fall, Dawn of the Infinite, Murazon's Rise. Okay, we knew that those two were going to be Waycrest Manor. All right, Darkheart Thicket. Blackrook Hall, the Everbloom, Throne of the Tides, and Ataldazar. Okay, not a bad mix. Dark Art Thicket. I actually enjoyed that, I think. That was actually a pretty decent dungeon. Never enjoyed Blackrook Hold. So oh, good luck to anyone that has Mythic Plus there. The Everbloom is kind of alright. Alright, not a bad Mythic Plus rotation this time around, I think for players to enjoy in Mythic Plus. Um, among these are some dungeons that are appearing for the first time in Mythic Plus that we're really excited about. We had our Mega Dungeon, you know, that players mm. have really been enjoying from uh, the Dawn of the Infinite update. Yes. And we're splitting that into two separate dungeons for players mm. to enjoy in Mythic Plus. We also have two dungeons included in the map pool that really fit the theme of uh, the wild nature of the Emerald Dream. Uh, the first is the Everbloom, which we last mm -hmm. saw sort of in a challenge mode format. Uh, and the second is Darkheart Thicket, uh, which we last enjoyed during Legion, um, which has a really druidic theme. Yeah, right? Darkheart Thicket like was a right. Never uh, the enjoyed the, of the Emerald Nightmare that much. and that story um, back at that time. So we're excited to get players in there and um, you know see if the routes have changed since <laughs> you know the last time they were in That's the dungeons. True. For each new season, we like to have a mix of dungeons that are more linear, but also mix that up with dungeons that are more open, like a tall. Are, yeah. you know, in Waycrest Manor in a way to try to, you know, keep some variety in there and players who... I hope by now the bugs in this fucking dungeon has been fixed. Because <laughs> the last time I was in there, it was still pretty buggy at times. Like, you could still pull things from the next room over, even well towards almost the end of the expansion. So I really hope 
It's actually been fixed. I hated this dungeon, just FYI. Love the lore of the dungeon, hated doing the dungeon. If you enjoy routing can have some options, you know, um, to really like sink their teeth into. <laughs> There's um, going to be, of course, Mythic Plus new rewards. Yeah, Is absolutely. Is there anything else for the new season? Uh, yeah, you there'll be some us. new a new season of PvP rewards. Um, so okay. you know, new um, cosmetic rewards for players to you know uh, achieve in mm -hmm. uh, battlegrounds and arenas. So work on your gladiator when it comes out. Get yep. that fancy new mount. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So everyone wants to know when is the PTR going to happen. Yeah, so the PTR will be coming this week. We'll be on the PTR, you know, Ann and I will be yeah. running around, and we would <laughs> like to see um, players in there with us um, enjoying the new content that we have. Thank you both so much for hanging out and talking about Gardens of the Dream with me, and thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. All right, here we go. Let's quickly see here. Um, <clears throat> oh, shit. So they didn't actually update this. That's sad. I was hoping for a bit of an update, but I'm assuming that's going to happen much, much later. Yeah, no update, sadly. I'll be honest, I, I liked all of the lore stuff. I enjoy the, the fact that we're going to the Emerald Dream. That, that shit's whack. <sighs> I'm a little annoyed at just the lack of creativity when it comes to content. It, it really feels like we've been stuck in this same loop for... Well, it feels like years now where the outdoor content doesn't change. It's the same shit over and over and over again. And there are small variations, like this time you're going to escort uh, a dude through the forest and kill shit that's trying to attack him. All right. Then you're going to kill shit because now he went too far and everything's grown too big. All right. And then you're going to feed a tree. Cool. When I say I want more things, I mean things like Mage Tower, but reimagined with multiple floors or farming, bring farming back, like super casual things that doesn't tie into gear, that doesn't give you a currency to fucking collect. I just want to be able to play the game for the sake of having fun and not have it be tied to some stupid reward that I don't care about because I'm not a Mythic Plus player and I'm not a Raider, so I don't give a shit about the gear in the game. I don't care, right? It, 50 extra item levels? Cool. I don't care because I'm not going to use it because I'm playing only in the outside world, and for that, my item level that I have now is just fine. So I would like content that I can enjoy as well, but the problem is that all of the content we get in WoW is constantly tied to the fucking gear. Anyways, overall, I thought this was a really good episode. I am excited for the Emerald Dream, but I'm afraid it's going to turn into one of those patches once again, as with every other patch, where I play the story and then I'm done. I, I don't do anything else. I don't farm anything else. I just play the story and then I'm done. I want to hear from you. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe over on Patreon for $1 a month. You help to keep this channel completely free from sponsorships and you get access to some pretty spicy pictures. So go treat yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, be kind to each other, be good to each other, and I'll see all of you in the next one. Peace.